guys, welcome back to my channel. And in front of you, you can see my lovely Epidendrum Stamfordianum. Uh, from South America, yeah, as a matter of fact, it's, uh, it's Mexico, Honduras, and yeah, Central America, I would like to say. Instead, yeah, it's a species, and it's a hot to warm grower. And it needs a little bit of a rest, winter rest, dry, drier winter rest. What am I going to do with this guy today? As you can see, I've been placing a uh, larger clay pot into water and it's been sitting in water for a week. Yeah. So the pores are now filled up with water. This pot is now ready to go. Yes. But, you know, this guy is the most vigorous grower i ever seen. Yeah. You can see it's so large. I got this one two and a half years ago from Orchids Netherlands. I think I bought it uh, from eBay, their e eBay uh, page or webshop or perhaps their own webshop. I don't really remember, but uh, it was a good price. Really nice price for such a large orchid. I mean, look at this. And now it's really starting to take off. And it's been flowering for me one year ago. And I can show you a pop-up of its beautiful uh, flowers. The flowers comes out from the base of the pseudobulb, the newest pseudobulb. Uh, like, yeah, like this. I, at first, when it first flowered for me, I thought it was a new pseudobulb, but uh, a weak new pseudobulb. <laughs> it was so really thin, you know, but it looked like a pseudobulb. So they come, they come out the same way. So, and then it just starting to, yeah, grow quicker and quicker and really tall, and all these beautiful clusters of yellow, green, and white spotted flowers, amazing. As you can see on the pop up here. So, what's this? Oh yeah, yeah, it's got no more room in this pot for anything. How will this guy ever? be able to produce a flower spike from here or anything else for that matter. I reported this guy in March this year, 2020. So the media is not bad and it's, it shouldn't be broken down and I'm not watering this guy so often, once every every other week, since it's sitting in quite a water retentive media, since it's in a clay pot, I would like to have it that way, uh, for this kind at least. Um, so he's sitting in sphagnum moss and bark uh, charcoal, I think. Yeah. So all I'm going to do today is just, yeah, rip it out of this pot and place it into this large clay pot instead. But I'm going to use a little bit more bark and perlite around it. So let's see if I can do that. Let's see what happens. So where's the, yeah, the wooden knife here? The knife I use for butter. Well, I will not use it for butter anymore, but... I'm going to use it around the uh, the edges here. This one has already been sitting in water for a while, this one. So it could be quite easy to get it out of its pot without disturbing and destroying any, uh, or I shall say too many roots at least. And this wooden tool, yeah, it's a little bit more kind to it. Yeah, now let's see. Perhaps. Yeah, it was as simple as that. And as you can see, no root tips are clinging on to the uh, clay pot at all. Yeah. So it's a rumor as well, like so many other things in life. And yeah, orchids and clay pots is a big no 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 for many people, but uh, and orchids with sphagnum moss, and orchids with this, and orchids with, with um, coconut fiber is a big no-no. No, 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 but I can't find any big no-nos here. The only thing I can find is branching root tips. A lovely scent to the media. <laughs> I mean it. I really mean it. It smells great. Yeah. And, yeah, no rotting in here. Yeah, so... All I'm going to do today is just 
see what this is. A little bit of mold, since it was sitting a little bit too close to, to the uh, rim of the pot here. So, but now I'm going to solve this problem. It's not going to be too wet. So, and it's a nice new growth here. And I think that one is going to produce flowers for me. And it's going to put out a new set of roots. So now it's going to have room for it as well. Yep. Let's just see what to do now. It's quite a large pot. So just put the orchid down without putting it on the newest growth and destroy it. I'm going to add a little bit of this um, styro styrofoam, I call it, on the bottom. Just a little bit. We shall see how high up this orchid is going to be in the pot. Uh, yeah. And the aerial roots, I'm going to leave them on the outside. There's no point in in our, uh, oh no, I broke the root tip, but yeah, it's okay, a little bit. We're gonna manage. Um, yeah, this side of the, no the orchid is not gonna produce anything. Uh, no, this one is not soggy, it's just got a bad coloration to it, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's been growing on from a seedling, so yeah. I have this mixture of a little bit of uh, fine bark and quite a lot of um, perlite. I think I'm going to use a little bit of this in order not to make it too dry. And I'm going to use a lot of bark around it, medium sized bark here. Yeah. But, yeah, no, 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 this one is going to stay. Yeah. Or shall it? No, I'm going to get rid of this one, this little pseudobob here, the oldest one. But this one is taking up space, and I would like to press this orchid a little bit more to the side in order to get give the newest growth here some proper room for it and its next growth and the growth after that and flowering spikes as well. So I will not have to repot this orchid every year. I will have to repot it every other, perhaps, or yeah, even less than that. It's my goal. But we shall see. It doesn't reject being reported. All of its roots are always alive when I report it. I think I reported it two or three times already since I got it. This is growing so fast. Yeah. And a little bit of bark. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. It's a lot of perlite in this one. It doesn't hold any water. This media I'm using from a bag here, this pre mixed media. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna make this a huge pot for it, so I'm gonna, as you can see, I place the orchid quite low down in the pot in order not to make this a far too big um, pot for it. So, yeah, and I'll I don't think it's going to be any setback for this orchid. No, it's not going to be any setback for this orchid. I hardly did not touch the roots. And I can use the old stick here, old stick. I call it stick all the time, It's but it's a stick. Yeah, and I'm staking stuff up <laughs> with a stick, not a stake. Yeah. I think it's... Quite all right. Cut this one off a little bit. It's a lovely new growth here. The previous one. Yeah, it's a marvelous one. Yeah. And this one, I'm going to tease it a little bit to the previous cane here in order to make it up, keep it upright. To keep it going upright in this direction instead of leaning to the side. And yeah, this is it. This is the reparting, or shall we say quick reparting, of my Epidendrum stanfordianum, a lovely species from yeah, Central America, Mexico. Yeah. And I'm gonna put him back on my windowsill in my 
east face east facing window i think it is and with some additional led light uh, which is seem to be it seems to enjoy a lot since it's been taking off so tremendously the last couple of months so here you can see the lovely epidendro stanfordianum six weeks later after this quick repotting and as you can see it didn't do it any harm whatsoever um i'm not really sure about this camera yet um i have a lot more to learn it's not only pressing a few buttons here now and it's um it's more more likely to uh get a quite uh unfocused video with lots of blur and not so much depth to the colors so i'm not really sure yet but this one should have been the best uh, camera of them all so well I would just have to s sit a few minutes and take a break every once in a while and learn how this camera works even though I'm not so interested in this this technical aspect but uh, well that's what you have to do but anyways look at this beautiful orchid look at its development here is the newest canes to the right. You can see they are really large. It's the largest canes this one ever produced in its lifetime. And today I also noticed that it's got a... Um, um, I'm not sure if it's a spike or whether if it's a uh, new growth here. Well, I think this one is a new growth. It looks... Yeah, it looks like a weak growth, but uh, um, we shall see. I want it to be even weaker, even more weak, <laughs> in order to be a flower spike. It was one, I think one or two years ago, it last flowered for me. Yeah, one year ago, I think, last winter. So I think it would be a little bit about, uh, about time for it now to flower for me, to give me this nice uh, cascading clusters of... Uh, flowers from the base as you saw on my previous picture which I showed you but uh, look at this lovely lovely cane here this plant is such a huge one it's almost one meter tall now and it's also producing quite a lot of green lovely lovely root tips here on the um, the roots, the area roots that I left on the outside when I did this quick repotting on this guy. So, well, I call this progress. I really do call this progress. So, this is a lovely plant and yeah, I think you should get one too. They are so beautiful. Yeah, takes up quite a lot of space, but but in return, you, you'll get the most spectacular blooming you've ever seen. Okay, thank you so much for watching today. And see you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.